Are you confused by the concept of a clutch? I'll explain what it does and how it works in this video from the MC Garage. At the root of it, the clutch serves to engage and disengage the engine from the rear wheel. So let's have a look at how it works. This lever right here gets all the credit for smooth starts, but it's the clutch assembly down in the engine that's doing all the hard work. Without a clutch to couple and decouple the crank from the transmission, you'd have a hell of a hard time starting, stopping, and shifting your bike. If you pop the cover off of your engine and take a look at your clutch, you might think that it looks mysterious and intimidating, but it's actually a pretty simple assembly that consists of just a few parts. To begin with, you've got the clutch bolts and springs, then you've got the pressure plate, then you've got the clutch pack, which consists of steel plates and friction plates. Then there's the inner hub. And finally, the outer basket. The outer basket is geared to the crank via the primary gear right here. So that gear is attached to the crank and it turns via the teeth on the basket. So this guy is turning with the crankshaft. Then you've got the inner basket, which is splined on the transmission's input shaft. Those two stack together. And then on top of all that is the clutch pack. You've got your friction plates with hangs along the outside that slot in with grooves on the outer basket. Then you've got your steel plates. They have tangs along the inside that slot in with grooves on the inner hub. Topping it all off is the pressure plate. It sits on top of the clutch pack and forces everything together with the clutch springs and the bolts. So. When the clutch lever is out, the springs are sandwiching everything together in the outer basket, which is geared to the crank, and the inner hub, which is splined on the transmission, are locked together so that the engine can drive the rear wheel. When you pull the clutch lever in, the pressure plate is pushed away from the clutch pack so that the inner hub and the outer basket are able to spin independently. They're decoupled. The engine and the rear wheel are decoupled. So as you're releasing that clutch lever, the pressure plate is being forced in these guys are starting to mesh, the friction is growing, and you're able to smoothly feed power from the engine to the rear wheel. It's pretty simple, and it's really cool. All right, you might be wondering why are there so many clutch plates? Well, when it comes down to it, the clutch's ability to handle engine power is a function of the coefficient of friction on the clutch plates, and also the radius of the clutch plates. There's some complicated math involved, but basically you've got two options. You can have a large clutch with fewer plates, or you can have a smaller clutch, but you're gonna need more plates in it. There is one more option, and that's to increase the pressure on the clutch. You could put stiffer clutch springs in so everything's getting squeezed tighter together. The only problem there is you're gonna end up with a really heavy clutch lever pull. Most motorcycles are gonna have a clutch like this. Small diameter, multi-plate clutch. But some bikes, like older BMWs and Moto Guzzi's, have a single large plate. It works on those bikes because they've got a crank that runs front to back, so they've got room for a large diameter clutch, but most motorcycles have a transverse crank, which means it runs across the frame, so design limitations require that it has a small diameter clutch pack, which means it needs a lot of plates. You've probably heard some opinions about what oils are good or bad for your clutch, whether you should use mineral or synthetic, but I'm here to tell you you can use whatever oil you want as long as it's labeled MA or MA2. That means it is engineered to work with the motorcycle's wet clutch. If you use car oil, specifically ones that are labeled energy conserving, those ones have additives in them that are gonna make your clutch slip. Speaking of clutch slip, if your clutch is slipping, it might be time to replace your clutch pack. Lucky for you, we've got a video that shows you how. And if you're curious about the difference between wet clutches, like the one in the CBR engine, and dry clutches, we've got a video that tells you the difference. And finally, if you're curious about slipper clutches and how they work and why they are totally awesome, we we don't actually have a video for that yet, but we are working on it, it's in the pipeline. So if you don't wanna miss it, make sure you subscribe, stay tuned, and of course, you're always free to leave your comments and questions below.